Hey, everybody. Well, it's an honor to be back here at my alma mater, University of Delaware, former Blue Hen six years ago. Very exciting uh, to talk about what I've been uh, learning for the past six years since I left school. And uh, that's to answer the age-old question, what the fun? <laughs> my goal here today is to do three things for you. First, I want to introduce myself to you and tell you that I've been the only person in the world who's been delivering fun for the past six years, as far as I know. Okay, that's fun. Second, I'm going to redefine fun for you all today. And third, I'm going to ask you how we can make it more powerful for social change, for any kind of change you may imagine throughout the entire world. Working in teams, working in groups, you can come together as a team. Your outcome is always better. At least that's what I've seen the past six years as a team building facilitator. So why not have you been delivering fun for specifically corporate America for the last six years? Well, my friends, the reason is this is corporate America. <laughs> My dear Lord, I need help. For all you college seniors out there, sorry to ruin the fantasy, okay? Not all corporate America, of course, but let me introduce you to three of my friends. This is Barb, Bob, and Betty, okay? Barb, Bob, and Betty. According to Gallup, the world's largest, one of the world's largest statistical research institutions, there are three types of employees. They quantify three types of employees in today's corporate world. There's Barb, She's sitting up front, and as you can see, Barb is an engaged employee. Gallup considers her engaged. She's actually paying attention in the corporate meeting. There's Betty. Betty's in the back. You may or may not be able to tell. Betty is physically at the meeting. However, you may not be able to tell. Her eyes have actually wandered across to the other side of the table to wonder who just passed gas and got away with it. <laughs> Betty's what we consider a disengaged employee. Bob is in the middle. Bob is actively disengaged. Can you tell? <laughs> These are the three types of employees Gallup defines. Engaged, disengaged, actively disengaged. Big whoop nap. Bob's getting away with it. This is great for Bob. <laughs> getting a little snooze on in his meeting. Great for Bob, terrible for business. If you have a group of engaged employees, three barbs at that side of the table, your outcome results are better. Gallup suggests Better numbers in profitability, productivity, people actually show up to work on time, turnover rates, and even safety incidences becoming better and better the more engaged your employee population becomes. So I started thinking, I've been doing this for six years, trying to get teams together, people to think together and, well, be a little less like Bob. What about if we took this idea of engaging groups of people together and took it outside of the corporate walls. Forget the cubicles, knock them down, let's get outside of work. What if you had a room full of barbs? What if this picture was not a corporate meeting at all? What if it was your family dinner? <laughs> yeah. What if it was a classroom you were just sitting in college students? College professors, what if this was an academic department meeting you may have come from just this past week? Pretty interesting, pretty interesting. So here's the deal. You get an engaged group of people. Here's the theory. Together, their outcomes are better. Pretty simple. Well, how do you do that? My thought is you can use fun. But I want to redefine fun for you all, not just as fun, because fun for everyone in this room is very different. Fun for me is different than fun for you. Fun for me is different than fun for all you here in the middle, I'm sure. Instead, I want to redefine fun as a shared experience. And yes, any two people can have a shared experience and even find room for fun between <laughs> themselves. Oh, my friends, Barack and Mitt. And here you can see, yes, these are their uh, propensities for fun. These are all the things in their circles that they consider fun. <laughs> Who knows what those could be? Okay. But at some point, their circles cross over. There's an opportunity for fun, an opportunity for actually to share ideas, be together, become engaged with each other, and from there, share an experience of their outcome is better. The more and more they get to know each other, the closer their circles get. Imagine what it would be like if these two got along. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Why a share experience, Nat? Why are experiences so powerful? I've got an exercise for you. I'd like you to do it with me. Ready? Get your hands ready. Here we go. According to a Dartmouth study in 2001, experiences are valuable. Here's why. You remember 10% of what you read. Go ahead. You remember 20% of what you hear. And you remember 90% of what you do. Let's do it again. 
You remember 10% of what you read, 20% of what you hear, and 90% of what you do. Pretty interesting, pretty interesting. So what's the next trick? We know an experience can be very valuable to engage people together. It's finding that shared experience. I want to do another exercise. Of course, we're going to have a little bit of fun. Here's your challenge. You've got five seconds in the audience. You're playing at home on YouTube. Five seconds to think about one fun thing you'd like to do. Fun just for you, no one else. You've got five seconds. When you have an answer, raise your hand. <coughs> Time's up. You don't have your hands up, people. Come on. <laughs> you be doing All right, keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Let's see. I just want to see if we can find a shared experience between two people. Miss, in the second row, represents a gentleman with a tie. What's your one fun thing? Ping pong. You said beer pong? Ping pong. Oh, okay. oh ping pong. I don't even know what beer pong is. <laughs> ping pong. Well, maybe sometime we can get together. I get them bored. We can play a game of ping pong together. Great. How easy was that? We could share an experience. Very interesting. I'm sure there's people in this room you don't know who have similar one fun things and share experiences. So what then becomes the challenge? Naturally, obviously, well, typical group sizes aren't just two people. Typical group sizes maybe five or six people. What happens? That initial opportunity for fun, that shared experience, becomes smaller. What about the typical corporate work setting group size? Team building facilitator walks in. Holy smokes, there's no fun to be had. <laughs> <laughs> the shared experience and opportunity for fun becomes less and less and less. So what do we have to do? We have to work on it. And today I'd like to leave you all with a challenge. And that's to answer the question of, what the fun are we all going to do in this room after TEDxUD is done today to share an experience? Get together, engage with groups of people to come up with the next big idea, to come up with the next cure, to find the answer to the next enormous social problem because there's enough of them out there to keep us all in this room very busy. And you're probably wondering where do I start? Here's where you can start. You all have one fun thing. After today, you walk outside, Ask someone you don't know what their one fun thing is and see if you can't find a shared experience. Thank you.